Um, you know? So I went to see something that is Nowitzki's on tomorrow, right? Um, Jeff Davitsky from um, you, uh, formerly of USADA. Yes. Now working for the UFC, took me to the UFC Performance Institute this week. Holy fucking shit, man! That place is insane. I don't know how much money they spent on that, but it's just like it, this is like some science lab. For, for training fighters. I mean, everything you could imagine they have in this giant-ass building. I've heard every fighter on the roster can go there. Anytime they want. Yeah. They, have, they, they feed them. They take care of them in the cafe. They make them healthy food. They'll, they have all these different things that monitor your body composition, your hydration levels, all these different modalities for healing and recovery. Everything. You fucking name it, they have it. It was, it was super impressive. Super impressive. They have all these video uh, systems that are around the octagon constantly with their monitoring, sparring from like a bunch of different angles. They can get 3D video of it. Mm -hmm. They can rotate it. Well, they can watch you spar from any angle. Your coaches could point out little weird things that you might be doing that you're not aware of. But pointed out, they always have the angle. They get every single angle. It's amazing. They have a thing there that, that like these punch registers, you know. Like, yeah. Like the video game, except much more scientific. Yeah. Here's a little trivia. You know, I was told is the number one pound-for-pound pound puncher. Francis Ngannou. By, by weight class. No, by weight class. By pound weight for pound. class. By weight class. Like, who's the number pound one? Pound-for-pound. Pound. Justin Gaethje. That's really? what I was told. Damn. Yeah. That's impressive. Forrest Griffin told me that. I wonder how many people have punched it, though. I don't know. Yeah, if I, don't could, know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is this is what I was told by, by Forrest Griffin. Well, he certainly so, punches hard as fuck. There's no doubt about it. Pound-for-pound, pound, I believe it. Pound-for-pound, yeah. Pound, yeah. yeah. I mean, Ngannou just... Punch it harder than anybody, period. Blew it out of the water by some insane amount of thousands of pounds a square inch. They said he he's Fucking like Drago hit shit. By Whatever a, he hits, he destroys, bro. He's they said he's Rocky like getting four. hit by an escort. Like a Ford escort. That's what it's like. <laughs> yeah. I thought of a totally different escort for a second. Yeah. There you it know? is. They got a video of it of him hitting this thing. That's uh Duncan French. Boom. So they have him do this thing and they had this this limit before, uh, or this record before that I actually I think was set by Tyrone Spong. No surprise there. Yeah, he's an interesting fucking character, Francis Ngannou. You want to talk about a guy that is literally right out of an author's pen? Like really? If you're gonna have a guy who you know, like Robert E. Howard when he used to write the Conan books. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like he used to work in a sand mine. He used to dig sand when he was a young man. Like, you know how much fucking hard work it is digging into sand every day and carrying it away yeah. and just getting stronger and stronger. It's literally like when Conan, Conan was pushing strapped to the, the wheel. fucking mill. Yeah. yeah. And then he was homeless five years ago, moves to Paris, wants to try boxing. Someone sees him in a gym and goes, hey, you should be in MMA. And he's like, okay. So he goes into MMA, goes to the UFC. In two years, he's fighting for the title and he's a big favorite over the champion, who is, if the champion wins, breaks the longest running title fight streak, uh, winning title fights in the heavyweight division, which is only two. It's a great story. It's an amazing story. It's a fantastic story. story. Five yeah. years ago, homeless. That's that's nuts. Yeah. It's like, you know, Henry Armstrong was working on a railroad. Yeah. Saw a newspaper article about a guy winning a fight and said, fuck this railroad shit, and went and started boxing. Became one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, or when uh -huh. Jack Johnson first became the heavyweight champion. I mean, everybody kind of knew. You know, you saw Jack Johnson like, oh, my God, these guys are fucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all downhill from here. Yeah. 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 Him versus Stipe is very, very interesting. And I'm just – I want to see if Stipe can figure out a way to avoid the big shots, close the distance, get a hold of him, and if he can take him to the ground. Here's my advice for anybody calling that fight, you included. I would look at everything but power in terms of well, who's got the better footwork, who's moving their head a little bit more, who's got a little mm -hmm. more defense because – Man, that's going to be, I think, tell the story is the one who avoids getting hit. And um, because they're both, they can both knock you the fuck out, man. Yeah, they both, they both certainly can. can knock you the fuck out, but Francis does it in a weirder way. Yeah, he does. He does it in a like superhuman way where you're like, Ugh. we see the angle of his punches. It's like he's yeah. trying to rip your soul out of your body, man. The it's Alistair crazy. left hook, uppercut combination punch that that shovel hook was just one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen anybody get hit with in all my years of calling sports. Looked like a Pez dispenser. Yeah. Boom, head all the, the way photo back. The photo's so crazy. It's almost like like a really bad action movie yeah. where the guy who's like the the guy who's rising through the ranks is just blasting everybody in the orbit. You, you go to sleep. He even talks like those yeah. people. It's crazy. Yeah. Every now and then you get a story like that. It seems like it's like Adam, like Justin Wren. That, that, that yeah. story is just ridiculous, man. Yeah. No, he's amazing. You know? The um, 
the other thing that about uh, Engano is the way he trash talks is hilarious. Like uh, Stipe uh, said, uh, he's not intimidated by any man. And uh, Francis goes, "Don't lie, Stipe. Don't lie." <laughs> like it's, <laughs> he's so calm with it, and it's so fucking terrifying. He was doing a press conference with Alistair. It was like uh, Thursday before Saturday's fight. They're facing off, you know, wearing their suits. And uh, Francis goes, Saturday night you go to sleep. Saturday night you sleep. And it's like, you're like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that trash talking bothers me. He's so confident about it too, and he was right. Well, but like Rory's like that. Like, yeah, I will in a take the way. belt yeah. and I will take your health. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm holding the mic like, Oof. okay. Yeah. I want to hurt him so bad. That he goes to the hospital and never wants to fight me again. Woo. And you go, oh, damn. Kay? He's not. Yeah, that's. Some he's not talking shit, shit huh? either. You know, yeah, sometimes people talk just... shit, and you know they're just trying to put up a bluff. Yeah. Like there's there's some even great fighters have said some shit they might have believed at the time. Like when BJ was saying to George St. Pierre, George, we're gonna fight to the death, and mm -hmm. I'm serious, George. I'm going to try to kill you. Remember that? Yeah, I remember it well. Yeah, that, but it didn't work out that it way. It did not work out yeah. that way at all. No, it did yeah. not work out that way. He might have believed it when he was saying it, but man, when you're in that dark, dark moment, yeah. big ass French Canadian dropping knuckles different in your face. world, man. Yeah, that was another one where you're like, "There's a big difference between a big 55er and, and a, a real 70, 70 dude," yeah. because he put it on him that night. Well, he was so fucking strong, and George was in his prime back then. And he also was a really good guy, and he was very motivated by BJ's talking shit to him. Yeah. It really pissed him off, because he's a nice guy, yeah. you know? I mean, the best way to fight a guy like George is just, like, be respectful. If he's going to kick your ass, going to kick your ass anyway. Yeah, it's not you like know? you can give him extra ass-whooping motivation. I think he had a little extra ass-whooping motivation for Bisping, though. I really do. Bisping talks so much shit yeah, to did. him that when he got his back, he's like, You're going to sleep, my Put friend. it on him, man. Yeah. Put it on him. Put it on him standing up, too, man. Just starting to wear down, too. Just when I thought, man, maybe the tide's starting. Because, you know, Bisping, mm -hmm. his whole thing is he's not a particularly hard puncher. His wrestling isn't great. It's he wears you the fuck down. Well, not also, a big 185-er. No. At all. It's just he wears you the fuck down. And he was also particularly effective off of his back with he elbows. He was. I was impressed cut, with that. Cut George up with those elbows off yeah. his back. That made it a real problem because George was having a hard time seeing him, and that blood was everywhere. Yeah. You know? What a good fight. It's I kind of like the story if George just retires. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. I like it. I like it. He, he bucked it. He bucked it. Everybody who doubted him came back, won, won by a finish. He's like, yeah, take it easy. Now I'm out. See, See now, now I'm seriously out. No, really. This time yeah. I'm in it. Yeah. Or he comes back in a year in 155. And then what's, <laughs> yeah, and then it's what? <laughs> Whitaker, Whitaker Rockle for the title? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. That, I like that a lot. I like that fight a lot. That's a dangerous That's ass a fight. fight for both guys. You ever train with Jacare? No, never. Dude, he was one of the first guys when I was a blue belt. He came by and he was getting ready for Pan Am's. And this is back when he was like, when he beat Hozier at World, broke his arm and still won. Like yeah, that was insane. Yeah, that, that was insane. That was, he would not tap. Wouldn't tap and wrote it out. They changed the rules after that. You know that? Really? Yeah, because Jacare literally stuck his. For people who are listening and don't know about it, Hozier Gracie broke Jacare's arm in the the absolute division in the world's 2005, 2006, 2004, around there. Mid 2000s. Snapped anyway, it. Snapped it good. But Jacare gets out. Like, so he breaks it, but he steps over the head and gets out. Jacare stands up, and Holger looks at the referee and goes, I broke his arm. And Jacare takes his broken arm, stuffs it in his belt, and wins the match. Because he was already ahead. He just kind of like, yeah. you know, stalled out for like two minutes and won the fucking match against the greatest of all time with a broken arm. So I trained with him at that point. He was like in beast mode. It was unbelievable. It's like being in a washing machine. It's the only way I can describe it. Because once he grabs you, it's like you're, he just flings you. And like your head, you see your feet flying into the ceiling. It's crazy. Yeah, there it is, man. Yeah, I remember this, man. I remember it. He just snapped that fucking arm. Pulls it out. And it is, look at his left arm. It is just... Just jacked. Done, man. And he went out of bounds. Right. And, and then he gets up. And, and Hoger at some point, I think right there, tells the referee I, his arm's broken. I, that's it. And Jacare stuffs his broken arm in his in his belt and keeps fighting. <laughs> Which is beastly. I mean, he did a seminar at, at, at our place, and uh, at the end, he fought everybody in the room. There were like 60 people there. Wow. And he fought everybody, tapped everybody out. 
Yeah, in his prime, in particular in jiu-jitsu, he was unbelievably good. And in MMA, probably beat one of Verdun. the best jiu-jitsu guys ever. Did he really? Beat Holger, beat Verdun. Wow. Yeah, it's just, he beat everybody. He beat Ted Aday, he's one of my favorites. I saw him live in Abu Dhabi, too, in like 2003. Yep. He lost to, he lost to Solo that year. 